So now that we've verified performance on the RS1 or SC1, it is now time to calibrate the VSN visual guidance system. So in preparation for calibrating the VSN, we want to make sure that we select a field that has straight rows for at least 100 yards and that's relatively flat. The reason being is we will manually be driving the machine down the rows and so you want to be driving as straight as you can down those rows. We also want to have a good stand of crop in those 100 yards so that the system can pick up and get a good pattern on the rows. We also want to make sure that the wind speed is no more than 10 miles an hour and that our solution quality is over 50%. The reason it's important to take your time during the calibration is that an okay calibration will work great in good conditions. But if conditions aren't so good, having that really good calibration where we've taken our time will let the system perform to the best of its abilities. To initiate a calibration or do any other interactions with the VSN, you will want to go to the UT. We will first set our row spacing by touching, we'll push the row spacing button here where it says no cal. We do have five profiles for different row spacings and we will calibrate only for the row spacing, not between maturities of crop or between different crop types just for your row spacing. So we're going to go ahead and type in 30 inch rows because that is what this field is planted in. We're going to go ahead and hit next. Before we start a calibration we want to make sure that we are going to set ourselves up to have the best calibration. So we want to have a relatively flat field we want to have a good stand of crop in that field. We want to have straight rows for at least 100 yards because we are going to manually drive the machine down the rows and we want to make sure that we are driving as straight as possible when we do our calibration. We're going to go ahead and hit start here. And once the system gets over four miles an hour, it is going to initiate the calibration. And we want to drive between five and 10 miles an hour doing this calibration. We also want to make sure that the wind is not blowing over 10 miles an hour when while we're doing this calibration. So once we're done with the calibration, you'll notice our camera to furrow offset as well as our camera yaw offset. The camera to furrow offset is calibrating the right camera lens distance to your nearest furrow. The camera yaw offset calibrates whether the camera is pointed to the left or right of center. We are finished with the calibration, so now we can hit our check mark and we are ready to operate the system.